Privateer Press, studio painter here. And with me today is going to be... Doug Seacat. He's pretty cool. He's good people. <laughs> uh, and also is John Swinkle. Is Hello, everybody. We had some slight technical difficulties. Yeah. The internet went went away from us <laughs> for a minute. It was yeah. dark times, but we're back. Um, so, today I'm focusing on Gorag Rotten Eye. This is for my personal collection, for my own company of iron list that I have created. Um, so I'm going to be just doing whatever I want. If you have suggestions, colors, tattoos, <laughs> banner. <laughs> tattoos? You know, You're going to get fancy. Any of that cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's all good. So, um, And then we have Doug here who's going to be talking some some cool things about Legion, hopefully. Sure. We can ramble on about crazy ogres a little bit, Ogren. So who is this gentleman, Gorag? Uh, Gorag is... Uh, well, one of the things with uh, uh, several of our new um, blighted ogren characters is, um, you know, it, it, we, we kind of face a challenge on the writing side with uh, exploring some of these characters because basically they're all just crazy in different ways. <laughs> and so um, Rotten Eye yeah, is basically the result of a blight induced cluster headache. Um, he is. <laughs> He's a, a blighted ogren that had a, a really, really bad headache um, that then caused horns to sprout out from his skull. Uh, it, it felt like it was happening like right behind one of his eyes. And so he, he literally tore out his eye and ate it uh, and then um, manifested some kind of powers, some kind of blighted powers that can kind of uh, radiate from from this, this orb. It's not too bad. Yeah. Poor guy. <laughs> I, I I think his headaches got better maybe when he took the when he did the nonsense with his eye, but you know I imagine he still has the headaches. I'm sure he's no less bloodthirsty, however. <laughs> yeah. All right. And it's pretty cool. Yeah, I just uh, just started playing Legion at the beginning of the year. I'm very happy with him because I love me some Ogren. Um, Thagrosh is my yeah, all-time Thagrosh favorite Legion. He's pretty dope. Yeah. yeah, Lilith is still my favorite, but Thagrosh is is very close second, and and he's arguably less insane than the rest. Although I don't know, maybe not. He's got he's got Everblight talking in his head all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're the prophet, you should. <laughs> well, sure, but I you know I just I just have to imagine you know he he wishes he had some kind of like mute button occasionally. So <laughs> just just you know stop stop Everblight from jibber jabbering all the time. What colors are we working with right now, Brennan? Uh So right now, I'm just putting down some Menoth white base on the front here of the skin because I want to make it look like uh, uh, his... He kind of has like an underbelly approach, kind of like you see on some animals um, that's going to kind of uh, taper and stipple out into a very dark um, color, which is going to be close to black in the end. Um, but right now, I'm working with Umbral Umber, Coal Black, and a little bit of Iron Hole Gray mixed in mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. to kind of produce the first steps of that dark dark coat that'll be on the back side i'm just kind of just brushing it on getting on there as quickly as possible so Am doug I... what, what's he got going on for that standard he's got on his back is that just like he, um, skin of his flayed enemies he, he likes it uh <laughs> you know it's something he likes wearing it makes him feel better um <laughs> But yeah, I imagine you know it, within the tribe, within his his ogren tribe, it's you know they it allows uh, uh, his maddened followers to you know locate him and and uh, uh, gather around him so they can murder the right things. Um, <laughs> but it's a, you know it's not necessarily a very sophisticated signaling system. So it's, but it's it, a but it big, works. It's a big sign that says murder here. Yeah, murder has happening here. Come on over. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> point of the standard just to let everyone know you're there <laughs> yeah exactly all right so. plus you got to wonder if like maybe you know i mean he, he seems like he's he's plenty tall but like if if there was anybody taller than him with the standard you know it kind of gives that impression of even even greater size so ogren are big how <laughs> tall are they on average <laughs> um we've we've kind of described them as being uh up to like nine feet tall, maybe a little bit taller sometimes. I, I don't know if that exactly works out with the model scale, but I think it does in some cases and not in others. Um, I know that some of the, like some of the black ogren are, are definitely probably on the smaller side. Um, but I think I think that we've tried to kind of push that, you know, and then there's been some that are ridiculously huge. Like I, I know that the, um, 
one of the first ogre we did, which was the you know the ogre and Boker was came out kind of larger than intended originally. But I, I always kind of liked the the bulk of him. I agree. He is a massive model. <laughs> yeah. So uh, then I'm curious um, with the Man of War coming out very close after sure. uh, Legion's Ogren coming out, if they were on the battlefield, on an actual Emirin <laughs> battlefield, um, in their armor, are Man of War taller, or are they close to the same size at that point, on I, average? You know, it's tough. Like, I always kind of considered them somewhat equivalent, but, you know, we have that one that's supposedly life-size that we bring to, uh, or that we, I don't know if we're still bringing it to lock and load, I can't remember if it's... Uh, damaged or not, but no, I think I think still have that right. The uh, the life size man of war, it just feels so huge. Like it feels <laughs> so much larger than I would expect. Like I'd I'd love to see uh, kind of a life size um, ogre and just to kind of you know get a feel for it. Um, you know, it's one of those things where like nine feet doesn't seem that tall when you think about it. You're like, oh, you know, six feet, but seven it's, feet. It, it's but real it's real tall. It's real tall, especially you get somebody that's like really wide in the shoulders. Because mm -hmm. isn't ten feet a story? Or armor or not armor? Yeah, I guess you're right. So I, I, but I think I think they're supposed to be kind of in the ballpark. I do think with the, with the armor, probably the man of war is still looking a little bigger. All right, well, I guess they went out on that one. But of course the. Ogren are infinitely more mobile. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Considering that they don't need the, the armor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give them an extra foot or so of Yeah, they'd, they'd be terrifying to, you know, see kind of charging down a hill at you. Yeah, you don't, you don't need powered armor when you're an ogre. <laughs> yeah, you're just huge. Yeah, and we've definitely played up the, the notion, which you can really see here with this guy, of the, the oversized weapons, you know, the, the idea the the Ogren have always been kind of in the setting um, wielding these these giant pole arms and you know these weapons that uh, would also be really terrifying to see coming at you. I just moved Brendan's name off the screen for a minute so they can see that thing because it's it's big. It's big. <laughs> it big. looks like it would hurt a lot. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've always liked that kind of st style of. Uh, uh, I guess it's sort of a mace. It's everything. Oh, it's space. definitely it's definitely Mace a pole thing. That, that thing, like <laughs> yeah. you know, like mall. It's got a is, lot of. It's kind of where I'm going. Well, it's cool because it's got some. It's got. It looks like it's got some sharp bits, some pointy bits. It looks like it's very convenient for taking Kadorans out of Man of War. Sure, armor. yeah, hook them out of there. <laughs> some or can you can, opener action. You could jab yeah. them with the the sharp spot at the end. You know, it looks like a real versatile weapon. You can even the. It looks like the the butt has um, some some weapon aspects to it too. So. Uh, yeah, that that is definitely. Not just you know for you know culinary purposes, <laughs> but you know or given, for resting given, on the ground, you know, given, like when you're going for a walk. Given the eating habits of Ogren, it could be for culinary purposes. <laughs> sure, you know? yeah. So here I'm just putting up some dots to kind of have this textured stipple it up into that Menoth white base. I'm not sure how well you can see it though. Just giving it some bleeding in with the. He's so tiny. Textures. What color are you stippling in there? Uh, this is still the color I used to base the other dark areas, oh, okay. which is like coal black uh, umbral umber mix with some iron hull to kind of desaturate it and a little less toned. So originally my ogren were uh, were were red, red skinned. Oh, and okay, then, sure. Uh, coworker uh, Marco was like, uh, well, they sh you should have them. The inside of, I was doing Thagrosh, I was doing the inside of his chest, I was like, what color should it glow? And she's like, you should do it like magma. Oh, sure. So I actually had it like bleeding out like cool. lava. Yeah. But then it was red on red with the glow, <laughs> so it didn't, it didn't contrast very well. So I do want to make his like there. face kind of like glow red and sure. like lava coming out of his eye. <laughs> um, and that'll read a lot better on, I like on that. these types of colors. Um, Patrick Augustine asks, what is the model? This is, uh, this is Gorag Rotten Eye. Um, who's a blighted ogren of the Legion of Everblight. But yeah, if I, you know, I mean, the Legion is full of scary things, but I do think the blighted ogren would be um, pretty high on that list, just especially with the madness that they, they evidence. Um, one of the fun things that uh, my coworker Matt Getz did, which I don't know if it's up yet, but he was putting together something... Um, for the RPG as just like an insider or something where um, for your RPG, if you wanted to play some Blighted Ogren, you know, you get to roll on your, your madness table to <laughs> see like what, what specifically is wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of derangement? Yeah, what, what, you breed of, what breed of derangement do you have? Is, you know, can, that madness can go a variety of ways. 
sometimes you just become more spiritual, you know, really get into Thag Rosh, get into Everblight, start you know, or you're ever preaching you really all get the time. Into Thag Rosh. <laughs> there we go. And which gray did you say you had mixed in there? Uh, Iron Hole Gray. I don't think I have the swatch for that. I wouldn't worry about it too much. I'm moving on. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm trying to be kind of quick here because, like I said, it's my personal army and I don't like spending you know, 10, 12 hours on a model when it's one of many. Do you have a pretty big uh, Legion army? Um, not, not, I wouldn't say really big, but I definitely have a list I really, really enjoy playing. And then these guys aren't actually a part of that list, but like I said, this is for my own But, Th but Thagrosh is your, is your caster? He's my favorite, yeah. There's always that one caster in every army that's like, makes me want to play that army. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, one of the bonuses of working here is I can have all those armies. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, usually that caster is basically the same <laughs> archetype, though. It's like the right. Butcher and Kador, Thagrosh and mm -hmm, Legion. Mm -hmm. you, you like the big, uh, uh, big guys like and get in Big mid do, smash yeah. it, folks. I, I like the guys that are... are uh, the people that are on the battlefield, and when other people look at them, they're like, no thanks. <laughs> Pass. So. Yeah, Thagrosh was always the favorite of um, my, you know, Brents, who, who, uh, who I've probably played against with the Legion the most, and mm -hmm. uh, he would sometimes um, uh, accidentally, like, refer to himself as Thagrosh, <laughs> like, when he was playing, kind of mm. got into it a little bit too much. Yeah, he's not really a Thagrosh kind of. He, he, he's not he's imposing not in that who, way. Who, you know, in person strikes you as Thagrosh, but mentally, yeah. sometimes you just got to channel the Thagrosh. You know, when you're. Well, I mean, he's just playing Thagrosh. <laughs> yeah, so he sure. just needs to think of him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what he would do. So the mentality is all he needs. He doesn't need the physicality in our game. Especially if you have that sweet off-world designs T-shirt that says Thagrosh. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think one of one of my favorite games was I think he just brought Thagrosh and um and an Archangel. Mm. <laughs> you know, and that was that was the list. Fair. <laughs> All right, here I'm just highlighting up real quick with some uh Menoth White highlight on this Menoth White base areas. Nothing too too fancy. And now I'm going to use Iron Hole Gray to kind of highlight the other color of his skin. Of course. Going back to the one I don't have a swatch for. Yeah. I, I chose <laughs> it just for you. Like, this isn't set in stone, this recipe. <laughs> I just remembered you said um, you didn't have it, so I wanted it to be difficult. So you said you're painting Fair this enough. up for your, for your own army and your own, your own color scheme? Yeah. My own little, which isn't like this is what it looks like. It's not determined, really. So I'm open to suggestions if anyone has any. So what else does your army look like? Like, uh, so you got Thagrosh. What else do you have in your? Uh, uh, with Thagrosh, I like running them in uh, uh, with all the Nephilim. Even okay. though I, I like it because mm -hmm. I can bring Typhon and sure. the character ones, Azrael and Zeriel. Well, the Nephilim um, are great too. Which I really, I, like really I just love the visual of all three of those characters just yeah. with Thagrosh, especially w with what Thagrosh One does for them. Yeah. Um, and now that Typhon's cheaper, <laughs> my list just got a lot better. We, cool. We've got to vote for Hot Pink. Hot pink, <laughs> right. but but on what? Like it's the thing. Hot pink on what? Mm -hmm. Like I've already painted his skin for the most part. So Got to figure out what those horns are gonna gonna look like, right? And Is that the hot pink? <laughs> All right. Oh, that would be awful. <laughs> that would probably not look good. My job isn't to choose colors <laughs> as a studio painter. My job is to make it look good. So. If you want hot pink. Trying, trying to just figure out where where hot pink could, could look good on that on that mini. I don't we'll find out. <laughs> Steven Hoover says bloodstone red horns. That's a good idea. Bloodstone red into hot pink. I, like. I always I really like bloodstone. I I find myself using it a lot. Yeah. It's got just enough of a brown. Yeah, it's like it, it can go yeah. either brown or red, depending on what you do with it. I I I, right. I found that was a, a paint color I was going to all the time for like rifle butts and stuff. Sorry, I gotta open up some bloodstone here. We didn't have any that I found. I always cheat and call him Mr. Diaz, but uh, he says, Brendan, you yeah, promised Josh. hot pink to use years ago. <laughs> sure. I'm gonna do all of it. And what did you say it was? Joshua? What was that? 
How do you say his name? How do you say his name? Josh Diaz? Yeah. Oh, Josh? I think. Oh, that doesn't look like Josh. Josh. He'll, he'll probably correct us. He'll yeah, correct us. I look like, a, look like a butthead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What? You did So, we'll be all right. But I only see the chat that's all the way up at the top, so I don't get to see the bottom chat. Mm. Yeah. Well, if I go like this. Oh, you're going to scroll down for me? Mm. That's so nice of you. <laughs> <laughs> Behold my mystical powers. The power of the internet. <laughs> <laughs> One of the other things we kind of explored when we were working on the uh, the essay for the Blighted Ogren was... Um, their attachment to these bones that they like it's to for you to keep on themselves. We we have the notion that you know they sometimes will you know find a, a favorite bone on the battlefield afterward and kind of you know grab it and polish it up and it kind of becomes like a little little personal totem for them, like a little good luck item that they bring with them. So is one of the madnesses that they can have is like <laughs> collect all the bones. Don't see bones. They collect something else. <laughs> well, maybe yeah, it could maybe. be. I wonder what the most interesting... Collect shoes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> From Shoe the battlefield, yeah. taking all the, the boots. We have been corrected. Yeah. He, go, he goes with Joshua, but uh, yeah, the way it's spelled, you say it like Josue. Okay. I know him in person. I haven't seen him in a long time, but that's because I moved here for this job, so... <laughs> it's been a while. Where, where was that you moved from? Yeah, where'd you move Virginia. from? Virginia. Virginia. Yeah. I've never been out there. It's for lovers. <laughs> it is for lovers. Are you going to do anything particular with the uh, the mace head on that thing? Um, blood all over it. <laughs> blood? Yeah, you can bloody it up. As you know? Re as Fair. possible. <laughs> he doesn't keep it clean? Doesn't like to? Oh, no, no. <laughs> it's a lot of work to... Get all those blood stains off of there. Well, not, not only that, but if you've got, you know, like various, you know, like bits of internal organs sure. and stuff hanging on it, you've got a snack. For later. Well, and I guess you could treat it kind of like a, like a cast iron or something like, you know, you just layers of blood, you know, mm -hmm. makes mm -hmm. it better. Just want to kind of get as much on so, there. So, so, <laughs> see, the way I see it is you have like a rounder or a turn or two before you're actually in <laughs> combat. Yeah. So you're modeling for your own army. It shouldn't Too be strong. like before combat that's right during combat. yeah yeah so it's not true. that he doesn't clean it necessarily <laughs> oh i see so he recently smacked someone in the head right with it. we're seeing him we're seeing him right after he got off yeah. the battlefield smashing some people right. or during <laughs> yeah i imagine his his rotten eye makes uh makes it hard to take a picture of him it's always well if he ate it can cameras. it be rotten <laughs> or is well, the remaining the, one rotten? the notion is the wound is also rotten you know, it's like it's it's always seeping. Um, I think gets had some fun describing how gross a lot of the things uh, in our upcoming uh, Legion theme are, um, uh, including Anna Mag and, and her pet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's, a, I think he really hit a hit a new high of of grossness. <laughs> with, 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 with that's some of the descriptions. That's the fun part, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. No, he had a lot of fun with it. But yeah, so I think Rotten Eye is just kind of uh, radiating, um, you know, this like malevolence from his eye wherever he looks. Just, <laughs> I don't just give you the stink eye, I give you the rotten <laughs> yeah, eye. Yeah, it's like, it's like a, you know, he's just, just putting evil out there. That's in his name. Like I always want him to be looking somewhere else. But it's not a wrong eye. So that's <laughs> that's true, guy. it's not a wrong eye. That's that's, that guy. is a different eye. No, wrong eye is actually uh, quite nice and approachable in comparison. I mean, it's, it's mainly just don't want his friend to eat you. And the undercolor you were using on the horns, uh, what was that? Uh, that was the bloodstone. So it was uh, carnal pink up here, mm -hmm. and then it was bloodstone, and now I'm mixing in Murder's Magenta into the carnal pink. Oh, there you, you go. You get this hot pink color. Yeah, I'm kind of just spreading our, it around. And our color balance is sadly a little wonky. Little, yeah. It's hot pink, I promise. Like, it doesn't get much more pink than this. Nathan Howard asks, Doug, does the uh, eye glow malevolently or just smell oh, really it's, bad? Oh, it's definitely glowing. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. The empty socket glows. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, with Everblight's well, light. Yeah, and I always <laughs> kind of imagine, um, you know, sort of that blighted radiation kind of looking like, you know, 
uh, it, it kind of flickering between like black and silver, you know, one of these kind of colors that's hard to look at. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to think of like black and silver. That's... Just just like you know, you I've seen I, I've seen some special effects where you mm -hmm, kind of have mm -hmm. that like sort of um, dark fire look. That's yeah, kind of how yeah. I've always sort of imagined um, some of the blighted radiation coming off of the dragons. Like almost like a foul heat shimmer. Kind yeah, of exactly. Thing. Yeah, kind of that. Uh, you get that um, that sort of mirage shimmer. So we have we have Everblight. And we have Turok from yep. Krix. How many other dragons are there currently? <laughs> the, well, we've never hiding. we've never said exactly. Never although we did touch on uh, quite a few of them. Pro I guess probably most of them in the Wrath of the Dragon Father. We had a chance to kind of um, since there was a, a giant fight with um, over over Imran, where where Torek finally um, you know took the risk of doing a flyby <laughs> to try to to get an Othank. And uh, so the the Dragon Alliance came together, and I can't remember exactly how many we've named, but I think there's at least like nine other ones, um, with uh, Blighter Gas being the largest one, who's the, the one up in the Wormwall Mountains there mm. in Signar, who's mm -hmm. just always kind of staring into the west, like waiting for Torek to make a move. And uh, we had it that, that in, in Wrath of the Dragon Father, he managed to kind of get the best prize out of that, which was the largest uh, Authank, so Blighter Gas became even stronger. So um, he's definitely uh, uh, formidable. Hmm. But Everblight is still considered the most dangerous because he's... Um, He's, he's out got, in the world. Well, and he's got ADD. He's like all the other dragons. Because he, he's inside of Ogre. <laughs> and, and he's inside of awesome Ogre. Ogre, yeah. Well, he's got an army. Like, he breaks all the rules. Like, he's he's actually, like, studied his blight. He, he, he can use it deliberately, um, you know, in well, one of the things that we've explored with the Legion is the idea that um, when he lost his body, which most dragons would consider to be horrible and, like, something you would never want, he actually became more powerful because he kind of was able to spread it out um, to spread himself into multiple you know agents and so he's kind of gained this sort of like uh, larger form through through his warlocks and uh, um, and like I said most of the other dragons take a long time to do things they kind of think a lot they mull on things you know <laughs> like time doesn't matter to them the same way but ever everblight seems impatient like he actually is actively like doing things uh, on, a, on a time scale that the other dragons just don't even understand a bit more immediate. Yeah, exactly. In in dragon thinking. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Do you like dragons? We'll Pick up Rush of the Dragon Father by Zachary C. Parker. That's Available right. at store.privateerpress.com <laughs> or your friendly local game store. That's right. All right. See see how smooth I did that segue? Boom. <laughs> that was nice. All right, I'm going to move on to something else. So let's see. Mm, I need a banner. I don't know what color the banner should be. Meat. Meat. Flesh colored <laughs> banner. I mean, that's doable. Well, I mean, it's 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 probably, you know, like, you know, skin of some flayed enemy that's been hanging out there for a while. So it's probably pretty weathered. Pretty weathered. Nathan Howard asks uh, if each dragon has their own blight glow color. And um, I would say maybe, yes, probably. Subtle, subtle shifts <laughs> in the hue. Yeah. In a lot of cases, something like that. Um, would kind of be up to the artist's interpretation. Like if we were to do some kind of cool metal, you know, painting of multiple dragons, then the artist could have some fun with it. We we tended we've tended to try to avoid having the dragons um, look that different. Like we don't want like the rainbow effect of <laughs> of dragons, you sure. know. Uh, so the dragons do all have some similarities, but I do think that there's there's subtle differences between them and. In how they're we've we've explored some of the differences. Torax more blight. necrotic. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Everblight is obviously much more abomination-y. Well, yeah, and I, the way I think about Everblight is he's almost like um, it's he's almost doing like genetic manipulation. He's, he's kind of cancer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cancer, but in a real systematic way. Like right. Especially with the elves, he's he's uh, 
you know, he's 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 creating biological weapons. You know, he makes them all spiny. Yeah, exactly. He's the uh, Umbrella Corporation. Hey, I guess. you know what would make elves cooler if they were pointy? <laughs> yeah, they were spiky. <laughs> but yeah, actually, that's it's it's worth talking about in in reference to the blighted ogre. And one of the distinctions is that like Everblight doesn't have as much control over how his blight affects the ogre, and they're mm. kind of like a little bit more of a random thing. Like he's not intentionally sculpting the ogre, and they're just. Uh, uh, they're, uh, they just kind of turn out that way and then they take advantage of it, take advantage of their madness. So I'm going to try this flayed flesh on, flayed the, on this. Flesh. It's going to take a couple coats, uh, but I just mix the Minoth white base in with Rin flesh, a lot of Rin flesh, I'm gonna just see to kind of tan it down a little bit. On that. Yeah. Um, since his skin is Minoth white base, I want to make sure that the, the color favors the other mix. So that's why there's a lot more written flesh, but there's also going to be other colors in there. Um, and trust me, it's a different color than his flesh. <laughs> uh, he's trying to adjust the color options we have on our camera right now. So, uh, so I'm being rough with this in a dirty brush, if you're curious, because I just want to be fast. Um, and that's kind of the first coat, depending on how many layers you want to do. For something like this, like you might like that as your first coat, then you just do a lot of shades and a lot of other color glazes and whatnot, and then that chaotic pattern can work to your advantage depending on what you're trying to paint, if there's a right. texture involved or something like that. Because um, sometimes cool. working from a perfectly smooth, opaque coat isn't beneficial. Right, if to you're make trying it like to a paint nice texture. texture. Yeah. So like leather is a good example where it's nice to kind of have that variation. Right. Um, I always liked painting flesh, uh, maybe. things like <laughs> horns and hooves, you know, kind of playing with the mm -hmm. the shades a little bit. So since this is dead flesh, I have a few options. Like if I add like purple to it, it'll look more bruised, which means there's still blood on it or in it, which means it's a very recent banner that he's crafted. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, I, I bet he swaps out it out or... pretty regular, you know. The old one gets torn in battle or somebody somebody pokes a sword through it. I, I do really like the idea of in the middle of battle, he's <laughs> in the center of the battlefield, sure. knitting a new banner and yeah. flaying a new person. Right <laughs> yeah, just, just skinning somebody, you know, while the rest just, of the ogre like, oh, cool. people around him are still fighting and getting killed, yeah. but he's got he's got his projects to work on. Needs some new skulls, needs a new banner. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold it there, ironclad. <laughs> Give me like 10 minutes. Yeah, exactly. I'll be right with you. Exactly. But but I do think, you know, that 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 is one of the perils of having um, a force of insane people, you know, in your army. Like, I always imagine the Nis sometimes getting irritated with the uh, the Blighted Ogren, you know, when they just kind of wander off and, and do whatever, you know, they want to do. So, so his first name is Gorag? It is Gorag Rotteneye. Gotcha. He was not um, born with the name Rotteneye. <laughs> but Gor Gorag was the given name. Been, right. Uh, his mom named him Gorag. Yeah. And Rotteneye. And, and just, just, like new, <laughs> just, right. that just like his grandfather. Right. Gorag Sr. <laughs> yeah. And, and it, you know... A few, uh, maybe a decade before, he wasn't crazy and didn't have horns sprouting out of his head. He was probably a perfectly normal, um, you know, Ogren who had a normal job somewhere, working up in the mountains. You know, probably probably a tanner based on been, his yeah, choice he's probably of a standard. tanner. Yeah. He was probably making some nice uh, some leathers, some, some Ogren pants. You know, that was what he was working on. <laughs> <laughs> and then, Brendan, was it you that painted uh, Bastion Falk, or was that Dallas? Bastion Falk was painted by uh, Jordan Lamb, oh, our, Jordan other, okay. our second uh, studio painter, the other studio painter. So. Oh, Legionnaires nailed it. Now he has a gory rag for a banner. Yeah, that works. I mean, there should be a lot of blood stains on it. It does produce blood. Well, not or just that, but when you point. swing that weapon, mm -hmm. blood is going to go everywhere. <laughs> All right, so now I'm just mix mixing up a whole bunch of different colors uh, into the base for the flush I put. Um, mainly coal black and some beaten purple, just to kind of get a bruised look, because I want to draw some veins. And I want them to look uh, 
potentially like this flesh is recent, so it might still have some blood up in there. Um, which is why I'm okay with going with the purple. So uh, Raven has a good lore question, which was how long ago timeline was, did Everblight lose his body? Would any in Io still be alive from that event? Um, that was about 200 some years ago. So I do think there could be some Iosins that are, uh, that, that, that experienced uh, Everblight, you know, how long coming is, from uh, below the earth and annihilating an entire city uh, in Ios. How long has shield been around? I don't think he's quite that old. We've never quite pinned down, I think, um, exactly how old he is, but I don't think he's probably, you know, that might have happened like just before his time. Um, but yeah, but there there could still theoretically be some older Iosans. Um, I think we kind of situated it such that they live, you know, they can live around 300 years or so. Um, so there definitely would be some, some Iosans that, that'll, you know, kick back at the, the barber shop and tell the stories of <laughs> Everblight uh, rising from a zero the, to, the to a night. Back in my day, oh, Everblight had a body. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, uh, elves need haircuts too. They, we've shown they like hair dye. Like, I, I, yeah. think, I think the barber When they don't they, just bick their head. <laughs> sure, sometimes they shave their head bald, but you got to keep that up. Well, Gorag Rot and I here will solve that problem for him. He'll just cave their <laughs> yeah, head in and sure. you don't need to get a haircut anymore. Yeah. Well, Gorshay likes caving in heads too. But <laughs> it's Gershield now. He's been forgiven. He'll by always me. be Gorshay. For <laughs> Not forgiven by everyone. No, but by the person who matters. <laughs> well, yeah. Hey, your God said I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't say a lot, though. She didn't give a lot of feedback on that. Other know? than, you know, hey, she you're did living turn him... again, and I'm not going to take Nissa I, from you. I would interpret as it as she preferred him alive more than undead. <laughs> 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 you know, she was doing a lot of people a favor that way, I think. Well, unless he just goes and does it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, that's true. That option's probably always open. I'm sure, you know, the Eldritch, uh, the Eldritch Club is a, is a little peeved. We haven't we haven't heard any interviews from the uh, the various other Eldritch since uh, Gorshade got transformed back. How do you, how do you think the other Crixian Warcasters feel? I I think they're hurt. Uh, especially we know Asphyxius and Gorshade, you know, used to be good friends. Uh, that's a and, buddy cop movie I want to well, see. Well, and and things went bad, <laughs> and like they. I, I really do think that Asphyxius is probably nursing, uh, you know, kind of a deep wound there. Like we, we've shown that Asphyxius for he all his have a evil torso. tendencies a deep wound? for all his scheming, like he, he cares about people. He has friends, you know, he, he, he and Denegra are very close. So I, I think, I think Asphyxius is, is deeply wounded by Gorshade's uh, betrayal. Mm -hmm. Well, it's all. And if people want to get, <laughs> yes. Is. If people want to get more information on on Gorshade's new return <laughs> to his past self, so to speak, uh, that was in one of the note quarters that that was kind yeah, of... Yeah, I can't remember which one off the top of my head, but we could, we could post it on it later. In the 70s. I, I still wish I'd had a chance. I, I, I haven't had a chance to write kind of... Um, I had in mind a full story that was intended to kind of... Uh, and the Ios Scorn War, but we just literally did not have time or opportunity to allow me to write it. But I still, in the back of my head, I keep yeah, thinking, we'll get maybe, maybe one day I'll, I'll write that. <laughs> it won't be quite as timely anymore. But, um, but anyway, but we did a short little piece that was actually really fun um, because it was from the point of view of Syra, which was something you know we've never done before. We've never mm -hmm. written in fiction, you know, taking on a God's POV. Um, so I had a lot of fun with that. It was a little little short piece, but you know, and, and of course I had to keep things enigmatic and <laughs> and weird. Well, because I think like the first step of of God training school is like when you meet your instructor, they're like, okay, from now on you will never say anything <laughs> yeah, straightforward. You, yeah, again. you can't answer anything directly. Well, because everything's more complicated. Like right. I always imagine them like you know they're viewing the the past and the and the present and the future kind of all at the same time and. You know, from multiple angles, it's it's really hard to answer things directly. I think when you're a god, I I still say it's just because they have to take ambiguity one hundred and one <laughs> ambiguity training. Sure, yeah. ambiguity one hundred and one. <laughs> <laughs> How?
how to say a lot without actually saying anything. <laughs> yeah, and, and ambiguity I think, 101. Like, <laughs> relatively speaking, Menoth's, Menoth's been pretty good about that. Like, Menoth's been a much more direct and clear about, you know, what his wants and needs are. Well, it's kind of in, in the name, right? Yeah. If you're going to give someone civilization and laws and <laughs> yeah. stuff like that, laws by their nature, right. ambiguity is the enemy. Right. I think it's one of the big differences between, uh, you know, our, our major majority face. Morrow is, you know, sort of a prophetic god he's always given these weird prophecies and and you know subtle clues and 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 menoth's just like go to x place and burn it down right <laughs> it's pretty go, straightforward go here apply fire yeah <laughs> rinse repeat yeah but but we are veering far from gorag rod nine how are you, how are you doing <laughs> over there? I, I think we're good all right <laughs> i love i love our how, lord how and i can't there? get enough of it so i'm very entertained <laughs> Uh, I am just doing my best to uh, paint something that'll show up on camera and look like flesh. Yeah, we've, we've, we've had some. Played. It's starting. It's we've looking had good. Some, some some color issues with so. this palette. Yeah. Another reality. But we have, uh, we have a whole bunch of layers building up into. You can kind of see the veins. Yeah, it's starting to look um, good. And it looks like stretched, you know, torn skin. So yeah, I'm letting, I like that. letting all these layers kind of just work to my advantage. You kind of see some glaring light but it's there it's there you'll see it when, when the gore actually comes in and we yeah. put some blood stains on I'm it liking it so once that dries a little bit i'll add the next layer um to get this effect i was just working off like i said uh the original base coat for this uh banner was ren flesh mixed with a little bit of metal white base um from there i did some coal black and beaten purple to kind of draw in some veins it was very uh, harsh you can see some but that was because i'm doing layers underneath it and blending it up so all those transitions on top of it right i still want those to show through so i want them to be kind of stark pretty... um and then from there i went back to the base color and just started adding in browns like Guncore brown battlefield brown um to kind of darken them up but keep them on the leatherish tanned weathered side right as opposed to the what we normally do for flesh um adding like greens and reds okay um so th that was the, that's the the thought behind how I've chosen my shading colors, because um, even though I want the the flesh to be recent, that's the the bruising and, and, and the veins. I don't want to make it look alive, like it's living flesh. Right, it just happens to still have blood in there. That's you know, cool stuff like that. So it's pretty remarkable how quickly you can get those layers appearing. Yeah, try to be fast, because then you get more time to do other things. Uh, Seth Conrad asks, so with Legion growing more and more, uh, do the other dragons feel threatened by him or think he will attack them? And the answer is yes. <laughs> but we've, that's another thing that's kind of come up in some of the recent fiction where um, the Wrath of the Dragon Father plot kind of involved this whole uh, kind of culmination of a, a, a thing that went down where um, uh, Kruger from the Circle of Boros actually kind of went and narked on Everblight to um, <laughs> to Blightergast was basically, because like I said, the dragons have this whole different perspective of time. Like It's almost like it had been so recent since Everblight started to do his thing that they hadn't quite figured out what was going on. And, uh, and so Kruger went and was like, you know, uh, uh, Everblight just ate one of your friends over there in the desert, <laughs> and he's probably going to be coming for you guys. So he sort of kicked the uh, the hornet's nest with the dragons and um, let them know that that uh, Everblight was was a problem. And so um, the one of the notions that Kruger was working toward was was hoping that the other dragons would basically take out Everblight. Uh, and you know there was there was a degree to which that almost came to pass. A bunch of the dragons were like hunting down um, the Legion warlocks. Um, Callus, the evolved uh, Callus II. Uh, is directly a result of that plot with the notion of Callus was actually swallowed by a dragon and uh, managed to cut his way out uh, but was but in but was sort of regenerating inside the dragon's you know uh, digestive system and and was transformed by the blight and so you know Callus basically permanently changed by being swallowed by a dragon so um, what we had happen at the end of uh, at the end of Wrath of Dragonfather, a little spoiler, but uh, you know it's still fun to read the details if, if you get into it. But there there was a bit of an arrangement worked out between um, Everblight and the other dragons. But I, I can't expect any of them trust that Everblight will stick with it. Like he, they just know that if he gets the opportunity, he'd be coming for him again. So it's there's sort of a little bit of a, um, a stalemate thing, a little bit of a cold war 
uh, thing that we have going on between the dragons where, um, you know, they, you, they never quite entirely trust each other, but for a little while you might be able to be like, okay, you know, maybe you're focused on something else, not eating each other. <laughs> Like, can, can we do something other yeah. than eat each like, other today? Remember I mean, that, Tor- well, because they saw like what, what happened. Like they were they went for Everblight, and then Torek came and ate one of them. So <laughs> Torek is the big problem. Um, Everblight is also a big problem. But um, you know, you kind of got to balance it all out. You hear that? So to get a little bit more on track, who's yeah, yeah, your favorite character ever? <laughs> What's that? A favorite on character ever, ever, ever in general in the whole so setting? Probably not quite on. Yeah, you Haley. have one. Ah, that's really tough. Um, I don't know. I my thought uh, went at first to Madrak. Um, Madrak's definitely been one of my favorites. That's to not the explore. MA name. I thought you were going to go. Nah, with. Which what were you thinking? I thought you were going to go Magnus. I love Magnus too. He's he's great. Um, and 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 Magnus was you know probably hands down the most fun part of writing my novel um when i wrote uh, blood of kings that was that's why i was gonna yeah. say like it like he's great even if he's not your favorite i can tell you like the character in that book well, he yeah he's got all the 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 layers there that you want where you know he's been a bad guy he's been a good guy he's done horrible things but he's got good reasons for doing them you know he's just a real complicated interesting character and and um and I liked I like his evolution. You know, it was fun um, in the in the uh, anniversary issue of No Quarter. Had a chance to go back and do mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. Shard Invasion story, getting into Magnus's um, past when he was a you know Signar and Warcaster. That's the tenth anniversary issue, right? Yeah, the, the black one. Yeah, and uh, but it was just kind of fun to look back on you know what what where he came from as a military guy. But yeah, I'd, I'd say Magnus is definitely really high up there, um, but. I don't know. It's tough. It's it's real tough to make a choice. Uh, another one that's that's been a big favorite of mine, but we haven't had a chance to get him in the limelight a lot. But I've always really liked Balder of the Circle of Boros. Like mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. Balder's I, neat. I like I like some of the characters that are just trying to do their job. <laughs> you know? I'm gonna like, I'm gonna channel Hungerford for a second and say that you were supposed to say your favorite character is Chuck Dogwood. No, Chuck Dogwood <laughs> is definitely not my favorite character. Not even not even in the top 100. <laughs> what what kind of wash are you using, Brenda? Uh, so here I have mixed together Sanguine Base, just a tiny bit of that with brown ink and red ink, and I'm kind of just splotching it on uh, to create this kind of blood effect. I'm mm-hmm. letting it dry a little bit before I move it around with my second brush um, to get the ring effect, which if you're trying to go for a smooth blend, that's not what you want. But right. here I'm just trying to create this. Texture. It looks like it kind of like maybe got washed out because that's it's just simulating yeah. what happened in real life. Um, so I'm trying to use all this to my advantage. That's cool. Um, that's why I haven't been too concerned with every layer, because I know there's going to be so many layers that eventually I can just clean it up with the next layer and get to the fun parts. So quicker. with a surface like that, uh, that back banner, would would you be inclined to do some freehanding on there? Um, well, technically I did. Did that you? That's what those veins were. <laughs> I see. Uh, Which are actually coming through pretty good on, on the screen now. Uh, good. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it's a good spot for, for, for some, like doing uh, some kind of emblem or... Yeah, I mean, the official model has a very faint emblem of okay. the Legion of Everblight on it, um, which I painted. Uh, but you definitely have some room to do some real stuff here, yeah. um, which I was kind of expecting someone to suggest something, but they didn't. <laughs> so instead, we just have some blood-stained skin. Well, it's cool, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, you know, like you said, he just got it. Like, he's going to yeah, yeah. take it home later. He's going to gonna do some work on it. Yeah. He's gonna switch it out. He's gonna autograph it. He's gonna sell it. He's probably got some really gross uh, things he's using for paints. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, back at the cave, probably just blood. Yeah, <laughs> various whatevers he's picked up. With yeah. a, with a little... That's what he's doing. He's, he's trying to create his paint collection. Yeah, he's going like, back there. He's ringing it I, out. I think Gorag. Gorag, Gorag is. We've we've decided he's he's a craftsman. Like he's yeah. uh, he's an artist. Do you, not, do you think he like weeps some of the some of the goo from oh, his yeah. eye and, and mixes that? That's in probably there? real good for the for the paints. But yeah, I think Gorag we've 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 really kind of added some depth to his character with uh, his arts and crafts that he's doing out on the battlefield. Seth's like, do you have a favorite character, Jack or Beast? I'm I'm gonna answer that question because uh, the Thunderhead. <laughs> the Thunderhead's great. Yeah, I love the Thunderhead, and and I haven't been had a chance, just haven't had time to to play as much lately. But um, uh, when you know when I was playing more regularly, um, Nemo and the Thunderhead were were mm-hmm, pretty mm-hmm. much 
my go-tos a lot of the times with lists. Uh, it'd either be Siege or, <laughs> or Nemo that I'd be running. Um, I had some of my most memorable fun games with, uh, with Nemo uh, and the Thunderhead. I just loved moving the Thunderhead up and doing that pulse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just nothing more fun than that. Now, I do have to say, though, that, uh, that last year when, when we put out Loki... Oh yeah, Loki's I was amazing. like, oh, yeah. I might have to start a circle army. Right. <laughs> like I always thought the druids were cool. I always thought warp wolves were cool. Uh, I just I got too hard into Legion. Yeah. But circle is pretty damn. I tempting. really like Megalith too. I've got to go with Death Jack. <laughs> Death Jack, oh, especially great. the new one. Oh, it's so. Cool. I don't even think I model didn't, visual. Didn't he's that. just he's the original one for me. Yeah, yeah. I was mm -hmm. a lore. Uh, He's great, and and that was that's one of the players, oldest ones so, too, because you yeah. know that was back in the old Monstronomicon one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I remember, you know, some of the early. I, I I didn't write that one, but I was with the team that did, and um, you know, when we were working on just the concept for the Death Jack, like that was one of the ones in the old for the old role playing game. We wanted something that was super powerful and just scary as hell, terrifying. And so yeah. you know, we were like, let's not worry about this being balanced for like an adventuring party to take out. Like this needs to be just a, a nightmare that's been terrorizing the land. Like you, you'd need a whole campaign to you know take this thing out. And uh, and so just, seeing that come to life as a model was was super cool. Is that just some Thamar Black? This is just Thamar Black. I'm just blocking out the, uh, yeah. the I'm going to make this a black uh, shaft. Cool. So I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to add one color once it's dry um, to kind of simulate where the light's hitting it. What do you think he made that out of? Made the staff out of? I feel like someone made this weapon for you him. You don't think he was making this? this I is, think he was busy not a, he's not a metal, knitting he's not a metal and sewing his own tabards. Right. And he's, like, he's more of a cloth uh, yeah, leather yeah, he's guy. he's a cloth guy. He's a guy. <laughs> He didn't pick Gorag up the tailor is he's what a, he was tailor, named. Basically. Now he's Rotten Eye. Yeah, he's a, he was a tailor, and then uh, he still occasionally likes. I mean, to He has make one eye tabard. now, so I'm pretty sure his depth perception is in there. So swinging. <laughs> well, you, you mentioned that he made pants. So is he Rotten Eye for the Ogren guy? <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But yeah, no, you're I would right. feel bad, but I don't. Somebody, somebody had to make that weapon. Someone, somebody lovingly created that weapon. Animac. Because <laughs> yeah, I, I like to think, think that he just took smithing. it from him. Yeah, he just goes know. around like, I like what you're wearing there, <laughs> fellow so, uh, I see. Ogren. So somebody else, that was like That's his prize fun. item, like yeah. some, some other Ogren. To hand was, me down heirloom. Yeah, yeah. Just this, the youngest Ogren, hasn't seen battle yet. <laughs> it's just like his dad just his died. His dad got him this from really him. cool mace, yeah. and then uh, Rotten Eye comes over, stares at him until yeah. he dies. Give me <laughs> Because Ogrens are just fun. Yeah, absolutely. Amana Panama points out uh, 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 Dahlia and Scarith. Yeah, they're they're really cool too. They are really neat. Like I, I have that model. I'm the tassel worms are super cool. Like I, I would definitely like to see more more tassel worms. Is there any is, is there any story stuff on her? There's a little bit. We haven't had a chance to get her into the fiction. Most most of those sort of um, you know lesser warlocks, we haven't had a chance to get in the fiction much, which I think is a shame because mm -hmm. other than Wrong Eye, Wrong Eye's had some uh, number of cameos, but um, I love all of those characters. And Where whereabouts is she from? She is from Ios. Um, uh, and and one of the things that's kind of fun, like if you read her entry, it's been a little while since I read it, so it's not all as fresh in my mind as certain things. But she's described as basically she's kind of crazy, like she's this crazy. Fl flutist, flautist, <laughs> who uh, flautist, uh, who uh, apparently it gets along well with with multi-eyed serpents, and um, and who doesn't really? Yeah, <laughs> but but you get the notion from her model entry. She's not going to war in her head. She's probably just kind of on an adventure in a lark with her crazy friend, this tassel worm that likes to eat things, and um, she's there's this kind of interesting sort of whimsical flavor to her which i like you know the notion of her maybe being a little bit um separated from the real world <laughs> alex says doug when uh when you get into the more complex personalities in some of the warjacks if two of them are powered up and you know like waiting in the bays or what have you uh <laughs> do they interact like unmonitored puppies and get into trouble? Yeah, that's a good question. And I do think that probably happens. Like I've, I've talked to Matt Wilson about it, you know, like he, he definitely thinks of the Jacks as having somewhat of like, you know, guard dog personalities. And so they're, they, they don't have um, people intelligence, but there is sort of a degree of almost 
playfulness with some of them, which you know you'll see sometimes in the animated stuff that we've done before, where mm -hmm. um, you know they don't just stand there completely still, you know, when they're not fighting. Um, they 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 are inhabiting those frames like they're a body, and I do think that there's there's some sort of um, animal like um, mannerisms, and I could definitely see, uh, you know, old Rowdy and I don't know Triumph <laughs> getting into a, like a little bit of a scuffle. And, uh, and brick house breaking it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, no, come on, I, mean, I think I think um, nightmare and thorn. There's no one's around. So they're kind yeah. of just playing with each uh, other. Those Crixie and those Crixie and Helljack. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to leave them unsupervised for uh, for too long. Death Jack's just wrestling. <laughs> you don't want to play with with Death Jack though. <laughs> Death Jack's a whole other thing. Like yeah, I think the, I what I like to imagine is even the other Helljacks kind of keeping their distance from the uh, the Death Jack. Yeah, just ooh, I think I'll be over here. <laughs> Let's we'll just stay away from that one. And I'm just using some cool. radiant platinum to uh, highlight some metal here. Mm -hmm. Let me spark it out. Uh, I previously painted the the metal off screen. It was just some uh, pig iron that I just dry brushed on real quick. I love pig iron. Um, I think that's that's my favorite of our. Yeah, cold steel's still up there, but yeah. pig iron's pretty great. Yeah, and then I just washed it with some uh, Thamar uh, black armor wash and great coat gray. Just get a really nice kind of foundation and just lathered that on and that's been dry for a while since before we started this cast and now i'm just touching up the metal with the highlights it's looking pretty cool yeah the 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 pink going on in the horns yeah i turn out i was like not expecting that to to work as well as, it does. as as i thought it would well and i really like the idea of seeing kind of the little like strips of flesh on the on there mm -hmm. well it also kind of looks like he actually uses his horns <laughs> yeah so they've got like a little bit of blood seeping into the bone <laughs> color mm -hmm. oh yeah that's a good point like they're stained oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah put some blood on there <laughs> i'll come back to that in a second <laughs> Luckily, my, my mix is already there. Well, it, and it was one of the things I'm realizing just watching you paint it and kind of looking at the model is just, you know, from a visual standpoint, how prominent those horns are. You know, like if you're on the tabletop, oh, yeah. like those are going to be where your eye goes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like how Alec was, you know, like you were talking about old Rowdy. He's like wondering about Ace. Just think about what he's picked up from Kane. <laughs> like, yeah, Ace. Well, Ace is Ace pretty, has a drinking problem. Ace, problem. Is, right. Ace right. is interesting. Both both Ace and Thorn are ones that we've shown as being particularly sophisticated. Like they're, mm -hmm. I think they're a little bit less like animals, a little bit more like people. Um, well, because they've been with their warcasters for a while. Yes, and and they both have sort of special cortexes, like. Um, Thorn, uh, well, and, and you know, Haley's got her weird, crazy, um, wibbly, powers. wibbly, tiny, limey <laughs> yeah, stuff going powers. on. But yeah. I mean, like, like we've implied that that that, ha that being connected to Haley over an extended period of time has affected Thorn's cortex, and it's probably become more sophisticated because well, of that. Well, and her power level is yeah, it's off the charts, stupid high. Right? <laughs> yeah. So I would imagine that you know, like anytime she connects, it's not just like a like little like you know, like minimum connection it's yeah like, you can it's imagine like, you it's know, like it's like paving three line direct <laughs> right connected. like i imagine it kind of like um you know with Haley's mind because because a lot of her power is intuitive she's she's um not a cerebral wizard she's not somebody who's systematic but she's super powerful and so i just imagine her mental force kind of reshaping the cortex you know when she's in there and ace on the other hand was kind of made as like a special prototype like he's mm. he's um, older than the hunter frame that you know that he's sort of based on um, so he was kind of an early sort of hunter prototype uh, and you know had that kind of crazy um, stealth system uh, which used to be better than the current one but the uh, the guy who invented it died under mysterious circumstances and uh, probably a key. I, have was, to, was, I have to imagine you, a did key. he make blimps too <laughs> no 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 he was focused on <laughs> stealth technology apparently but I, I just imagine some Kadoran uh, you know section 3 agent or something probably was like you know we need to we need to put an end to this whole if, if Signar you, having stealth if you want to live in the Iron Kingdoms especially in Signar do <laughs> yeah. not work on stealth technology not, or yeah. airship uh, slash blimps I think anytime you are working on really advanced technology there's much in better Signar. much better chance <laughs> of being assassinated like nemo is really lucky that he got to uh got to stick around he well, got to be a war <laughs> yeah. well, then, nemo's just he's just legit well and he's a badass yeah, yeah. like you, you know he assassin comes for nemo you get you get a lightning bolt in your yeah. face he just kind of looks over the rim of his glasses he's like really <laughs> really son? you gonna really? try this on me 
I've been, I just, I, I've been dodging death traps since before you were a glimmer in your mama's yeah, eye. I know I'm 80, but I could tear you apart with my mind. <laughs> but but yeah, Ace Ace is definitely pretty interesting. Like I think Ace is um, has has got a real strong personality, and then yeah, that's been affected by Kane. So what are you working on over there now? Uh, I've returned to the metal highlights mm -hmm. to kind of just pop out of this. So it's really just two colors now, or three colors total. Like I said, it was just a dry brush, a pig iron, a wash, and I'm just using a really bright metal to kind of pop out the details uh -huh. uh, to make it just really fast and easy for my own tabletop stuff, which is mm -hmm. what I like to do. Try to be as well, it's good efficient. contrast going on with the with the darker shades of the metal and uh, yeah. and the, the skin is doing the same effect. So Raven is asking, um, do Myrmidons, uh, Rhett Jacks, develop personalities like the ones for the rest of Ios, or for the rest of the Iron Kingdoms? Um, and the answer is, which I, I was honestly a little disappointed by with the direction that we went with that. We've kind of had the notion that the Myrmidons are a little bit, they have a little bit less personality because they're more deliberately engineered. They're, they're kind of sterile. They are, but right, but I in the in the in the you know like the, the sterile working environment. Yes, kind and of the, and the way we've sort of explored it with some of our character jacks in the ret is that um, they can develop personalities and advanced minds, but it's more intentional. It's like you can imagine the um, the the specialists in in Mirbadons mm -hmm. creating. It's uh, much more it's, custom. It's much more like AI. You know, it's mm -hmm. they're they're like they're creating uh, a tool for a specific purpose. But but they're still you know you always have the the unpredictable a little bit uh, of bleed. Yeah, a little little something that'll happen. Little quirks. Um, but I do think the Myrmidons tend to be a little bit less uh, quirky, I guess, than than your your human warjacks. Well, and it's it's kind of reflective of of the IOs and attitude in yes. general. Yeah, right? absolutely. They're, a little less rogue thinking. Hap haphazard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, while we're talking about character jacks, how long does it usually take for a jack to become a character for a war caster? Well, that's, it, it's, it's an interesting topic. Like, one of the ways that we try to approach it in the fiction, you know, which people will notice, is that, like, we try to think of every jack as being a character jack. It's just whether one rises to the level of being noticeably famous different. Yeah, yeah or gaining mm -hmm. you know gaining some infamy being around a while but being around a while definitely helps um well because they're gonna have to have parts replaced and get more customization <laughs> yeah. and well and and we've suggested that over time um you know the cortexes get weirder basically like they pick up sure. more and more quirks which could be good or bad and um sometimes they'll even wipe a cortex to reset it but in but that's that's something you don't want to do with a jack that's been you know, getting all this fighting experience and, and learning how to do what it does. And so in many cases, you'll put up with weird personality quirks because the jacks become really good at what it does. Um, and I saw in the thread, somebody earlier was mentioning uh, Rosanante, uh, which is another one of our my favorite character jacks. And, and that's a really old uh, war jack that, that has developed a lot of personality from being around a long time. Like actually seems to be actively intrigued by children it's like what are these little people <laughs> and uh you know uh, there was a, a scene that was referenced where which which um aaron rudell wrote which i really liked which was like you kind of get the the sense of rosinante trying to come to grips with death um and that's something else that um i think we showed with old rowdy recently too is that the, you kind of see some of these some of these jacks almost kind of developing some um Self-awareness. Self-awareness, yeah, through the through the scope of just experiences and being out there. So on the other side of the spectrum, for war beasts, yeah. since it's not a cortex thing, is it just notoriety? And yeah, I think just notoriety. Because like, obviously they're all individuals. Yeah, and, and that's so. kind of, like I said, that's sort of the conceit that we try to try to have is that any jack any any beast is a is a character it has some personality it's just whether it's something that's worth you know lingering on or, or well and that's going to come through and playing the game too yeah right because you're going to you know every once in a while you're going to like throw those you know crazy box cars or yeah. something like that and do something you know semi unexpected well, or that's, delightfully surprising well it's been one of the fun things with going to the convention sometimes is you know I'll run into players and talk to them where they've you know they've taken a jack and customized it or they've taken a beast and kind of added their own flavor and sometimes mm -hmm. that's based on games that they've played before um, run into guys who have like um, you know a tweak to their bases because of you know something crazy sure. that went down in a game and I, I love to see stuff like that yeah like adding trophies to yeah to stuff which you can do for your um 
Ogren, by the way, just get some spare skulls. <laughs> sure, yes. And every time any, you kill someone, glue it on. Yeah, to any them. heads, body parts, Why whatever. Do they have a bag filled with skulls. Like, <laughs> I've been playing this for a while. Even, <laughs> he's, he's, this guy gets some work done. This guy's gotten a lot of boxcars. Why does Thagrosh have skulls for fury tokens? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So for anyone who's just joining us, uh, we're finishing up for today here, but uh, Brendan is painting Gorag Rotten Eye, which will be coming out in about a month, month and a half-ish, I want to say, with the Legion releases. Yeah. And there's a number of great uh, great characters in that in that theme force, great new characters mm -hmm. that uh, we had a lot of fun with. So, uh, so Brendan, you mentioned this is the one for, for your army. Uh, My Company of Iron, yeah. For your Company of Iron, okay, yeah. sweet. I mean, also my army, but primarily painting him up right now for Company of Fire. What What about him has you excited for what it'll do on the tabletop? Uh, I want to play with Warmongers, and they are mm -hmm. pretty decent, mm -hmm. and he <laughs> just makes them pretty more decent. Oh, yeah. So he's an attachment. He does make them better, yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. Is he an attachment or a solo? I'm, I think he's an attachment. Okay. Whoa. I can't remember off the top of they They already have a Warmonger, a Warmonger solo. Right, right. The other one I really like of the new set was um, the Mock, the Truth Bearer. Oh, that model is dope. Uh, yeah. Super cool. Like, I was like, so when, when Kralix came out, I was like, okay, this is one of the coolest Legion models we've made in a really long time. Yeah. I don't know what we're going to do to top that. And then these guys <laughs> come out, and I'm like, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, we don't they... have to go into the weird abominations for them to be cool. <laughs> they can do Ogren, and they're awesome. Yeah, I think they did a great birds job. birds and vultures, and I like those a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and I like that it so. gives your army, like, a real different feel than if you're, you know, you can have the the, the Nis army that's going to look one way, but the, mm -hmm. the Blighted Ogren, to me, it just looks, it, it has a whole different vibe to it. I don't know. Alrighty, folks. Well, we are going to get out of here for today because, well, it's almost lunchtime and, well, that's how we do. But uh, make sure to tune in tomorrow because Dallas is going to be streaming live from Adepticon oh, about cool. the same time. There may be some issues that cause it to be a little later, a little earlier, what <laughs> sure. have you. But just watch for your notifications to go ping that we're live and check it out. He's going to be deep diving into some of the stuff for Crucible Guard and a few other things. Other than that, we will see you folks next time. Any closing thoughts, Brendan? Oh, yeah. It was nice having you guys here with us. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I was just very concentrated in making sure his staff is ready to beat people in the face. So, <laughs> Got lost. In, I did. Lost in, in, lost in the painting. So um, I had a blast. Hopefully uh, I'll see you guys again soon. Oh, yeah. That is that is for sure. <laughs> All right, guys. See you next time. Bye, Doug. Goodbye.